Welcome back. You're watching Inside Politics. It's now time for one of my favorite segments on the show when we get to hear from our viewers back at home. And you give us your take in terms of the issues we've been able to converse. Just start with your name and your views thereafter. Let's start with our first... Okay, I'm told that we're still fixing our lines, but allow me to look at some of the uh, contributions on social media, uh, just to read one or two. Don Sabo says, cost of living challenges, we cannot tax bread and deny our children bread in the morning as they go to school. We cannot have motor vehicle taxation when being taxes levied petrol. I think that's what he meant to say. Uh, another viewer says the significance of Limuru carries along the activation of people's rights against the ongoing uh, lies that might be given by the government in terms of bread causing diabetes. That was an interesting one from the co budget committee chair. I think that's the latest in terms of some of uh, the uh, tweets that we can find on X. Uh, there's one viewer who says, uh, he's called Kisiangani Juan Nahumicha. He says, uh, who is going to use the roads we are making if the intention is to remove vehicles from the roads using tax? Number two, the West. The most polluters want us to walk home when they are manufacturing the vehicles and are the biggest users. Insanity. Interesting comments right there. I'm meant to understand we have our caller on the line. Richard Moravi is on the line. He's joining us. Uh, which county is he joining us from? Well, we understand he's just dropped right now. We'll get to sample the calls in just but a few. But let's talk about, as we wait for that, let's talk about uh, the DP's uh, missing in action. Because that was the headline in the last two days as uh, various uh, newsrooms were speculating on perhaps what is behind his uh, recent no-show in various state events that have happened across the country, most recently when President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni was in the country for a three-day state visit. I'm sure you're scratching to <laughs> comment on this. Kindly go ahead, Okano, you before know, we listen you know, to Maliba. Yeah. Uh, the media has reported extensively that uh, the Deputy President, Honorable Rigadi Gashagwa, has actually missed <laughs> around uh, six to eight um, uh, national events, uh, right from tree planting. Remember when the president was also coming from Rwanda, he was received at the airport by Duale, CS Duale, CS Kindiki, and Majority Leader Kimani Chungwa. When uh, Museveni came to the country, he was seen off by our very own Baba, Rena Molodinga, and Murko men, mm -hmm. you know? So th 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 there have been issues, and actually, People say his phone has been off. But I want to say that I think Rigadi is one of the most strategic politicians. Limuru 3 has got a lot of effects uh. on so many people. And that was one of them. Because in my personal view, I think Rigadi needed to see what was coming from Limuru 3, how was it going to affect his people, and how was it going to affect him. And he has seen that the message from Limuru 3 is so strong, and he actually resonates that message. So as That's a good out. politician, a good politician <laughs> must lie low when there is a cogent issue that is affecting his people. Okay. And that's what Rigadi did. And lastly, uh -huh. Rigadi Gashago also, we also know him, is not a pushover. The, if there are people, I listen to people like Mungatana trying to disparage him. I saw people like uh, Anwai Guru. I saw people like uh, uh, Majority Leader Kimani Chungwa. <coughs> they are disparaging their boss. Rigadi Gashagwa is the deputy president, is the principal assistant to the president. They are in that <laughs> government together. You cannot okay. fight him on the open. Me, I'm from Azimio, but there are things I've seen Rigadi Gashagwa do. Mm. There are things I've seen him say. I think Rigadi Gashagwa is mark timing. And whichever direction he goes, it will be good for him. Because if a divorce is imminent, okay. please, you get out of the divorce. You divorce and go. You don't sit in a marriage that is messing you up, a marriage that you are being abused. Mr. President, Mr. Deputy President, Kenyans love you. We are not in your house, but we are your neighbors. When your neighbor tells you something okay. that is right, please do it. Okay, interesting. Before you come in, I just understand there's a caller on the line. I wouldn't want to let him go. Uh, John Odundo, 
is calling from Kisumu County, Odundo. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me loud and clear. I can hear you loud and clear. Perfect. Kindly give us your take, John. Is, uh, good morning. Uh, good afternoon, panelists. Afternoon. afternoon. Yes, uh, I adore this program a great deal. Uh, because it basically serves as a ventilation medium uh, for very hard issues and facts in this country. And I graciously like the depth and the content of the panelists, Thank you. Uh, virtually all of them. Asante. It is true we are facing quite a hard time in this country. And it is true there are mistakes time and again. Uh, but uh, essentially, government is a necessary evil. It is the evil that we must live with. However, there are outstanding and cogent matters that need administrative and legal address. The first one, having been the Linturi issue, I may not entirely blame it for doing this or that, because that was their constitutional right. But uh, as the UDA apologist over there in the panel has alluded to, uh, there are still ways and channels that the August House can uh, apply so that they get this matter to its fullest conclusion. Okay. Great legal mind like Fanya Mambo over there and Okango should actually take the lead and see to the fronting of the final conclusion of the Linturi issue. I cry with Kenya because of the hard cost of life. Essentially, when someone now wants to tax bread, sincerely, this is the basic food tax component on the table of every house. Where are we headed to as a country? When one wants to tax, the motor vehicle, which of course is a basic requirement for transport and locomotion. Uh -huh. Where are we headed to? Okay, John. Uh, John, we hear you loud and clearly. Uh, we definitely cherish your feedback right there in terms of the Linturi impeachment and what can be done thereafter and equally on the finance bill proposals that we've seen so far. Thank you so much for calling, John. And uh, thank you for giving us a pat on the back. Equally, let's shift focus to our second caller, Lucina, who's calling from Kuala County. Lucina, good afternoon. Uhaligani. Good afternoon, dear the Rangers. Uh, first of all, I want to appreciate having an opportunity to contribute on this. Asante. Uh, Kuala County, we are a bit concerned and uh, silently following what happened on the other side of the public. But uh, I want to put my issues. Okay. Number one, uh, Linduri being uh, not impeached was an obvious thing because this administration failed from the word go. When you had an expose done by NTV, we realized of the of the of the flex fertilizer was taking place in a somewhere in Rift Valley, Mount Gariandusu. And uh, the the all intelligence uh, the department of Kenya did not discover something of going place in Gariandusu. Imagine packing a, a, a twenty ton lorry with the fake fertilizer passing on a highway all day to NTV in Eldoret. So that was actually a government activity, I can tell you for free, because if, if it was something being done by someone private, you can't tell me that the entire intelligence can overlook that one. Okay. 
Well, Lucina, thank you so much. Uh, we'll have to uh, cut it right there in terms of your contribution, but we definitely have noted your concern around the fake fertilizer and how intelligence should have been on top of that particular issue. Okay, that marks the end of uh, your call. Allow us to get the final comments and uh, I'll try and urge our panelists to be brief. I'm pretty <laughs> sure there are a couple of burning issues that we need to highlight, so kindly be brief as we finalize. Maliba, first with you. Uh, first of all, just allow me to touch quickly on a number of things that have been raised. Briefly. Number one, uh, Juno Dundo gives us a pat on the back, but he goes ahead and calls me an apologist for UDA. <laughs> I would love to remind John to actually just go and check the meaning of an apologist. He's one who supports an idea, an administration that is unpopular. Kenya Kwanza and UDA is not unpopular. Otherwise, we will not be ruling here. UDA and Kenya Kwanza won the elections. So, even by way of numbers, UDA has got 7.6 million members. There is no party near that. We are the popular party, so I am not Noted. defending something that is unpopular. Okay. It is him who is actually on the other side, so he should be called an apologist. <laughs> I'm a supporter of a popular cause and a popular move. Be that as it is, uh, quickly, the issue of the deputy president uh, being missing is, um, is a storm in a teacup. Because, number one, the deputy president has been working so hard for the last about two years, not taking leave. And it's not bad for a man who has actually worked so hard as he has. Remember, he worked throughout during the campaign. He's worked out almost the two years that Kenya... Have you ever seen him on leave? The deputy president has worked literally. So, he <laughs> so <laughs> if he takes a four days leave what a spin. and people actually start to make news, then it answers one question. Mm. For people like Fanyamambo who have in the past try to dismiss the deputy president, then this is your answer. That a man's silence okay. becomes news. He didn't say anything. He didn't do anything. He just kept quiet. And finally, the deputy president has got a right to switch off his phone. I do communication for the party, and I can tell you that my phones ring consistently. You've been here. See this phone yeah, ringing consistently. Yeah, yeah. So imagine the deputy president. His phone does not even rest. So if the deputy president takes a break to just rest, it shouldn't be a big issue. The okay. problem we have here uh -huh. is a media that has got a nose for crisis. They really <laughs> hope that there will be a repeat of Uhuruto, where there is a breakdown. There is none. The deputy president has taken four days of a break. He's rejuvenated. Uh -huh. He's rested well. Uh -huh. Now he's coming back. Now no just wait and see what he does from this morning. From Kieni, what he's doing today. Uh -huh. He's coming out and the truthful man is doing his work. So there's no trouble but in paradise. There's no trouble because, okay. no, yeah. it's important. There's no trouble in paradise because the deputy president regarding Gashagua is UDA okay. and UDA is regarding Gashagua. Kenya what, Kwanza to... is regarding Gashagua and regarding Gashagua is Kenya Kwanza. There is no Kenya Kwanza without him. So separate. Kenya Kwanza was just resting for four days. The rest <laughs> of you should relax. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Fanya Mambo, your final comments. <laughs> I think very much um, I'm grateful for this opportunity to have been on this show. And I must say that one of the most critical things is we had Limoru 3. It was the best thing that has happened to this country this year. And it is, it is sending very great shockwaves to the right people. And people keep talking about that. They are forgetting that Gadoni wa Moshomba, who actually really shone during that event, is a UDA member of parliament. And she challenged these members of parliament. If you feel that she's being a pain in the neck, by being uh, at uh, that function and having taken the limelight at that function, she challenged them to try, just try and, and, and remove her and take away the party ticket from her. To Tayenda Gidongo, this is to Trafunga Kazi. We will campaign for her. She'll take that seat on yeah, okay. any party ticket and everything. So all yeah, they're trying to say, all we are trying to she say, no, 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 we are trying to, time. no, this okay. is, you, you finally, had your time finally, yeah. Yes. All we are trying to say is that Kenya is heading in the right direction. Okay. Mount Kenya has set the pace. And I like the fact that even George Natembe has picked the one man, one vote, one shilling thing. And the whole country is heading in that direction. So whether Kenya Kwanzaa likes it or not, this is going to be the direction. And I can tell you, Mount Kenya will not vote with this UDA party in 2027. Watch this space. I'm sure the, the Assam counties elections. will not be happy about He's one man, one vote, one shilling. No, no, no. Like, just a quick one. On the, on the one, one, one vote, one shilling. No, no, no. no. The Assal counties. Please. office does not exist. No, please, please. Okay. That, that's one thing that needs to be clear. To the Assal counties, please. Nothing is being taken away from you to give to those who are more popular. So what okay. we are saying, that the Assal counties will continue having what they have. But from where that money came, 
there will be money for the others. So no nothing should no be taken away, away from the okay. Asal counties okay. to give to the popular ones. Okay. Okay. The popular it's, ones. Been, it's been wonderful engaging and I've seen the feedback from the public. They all agree that we are at a very difficult moment. They all agree that we have a regime in place that is heartless, reckless and careless. For us in Azimio, there are certain things that we are passionate about and unrelenting about. Those are concerns of the people of Kenya. We are saying with this finance bill, we ask our members of parliament, reject, reject, reject. But for you, the public who are watching us, we ask you to submit your views. Submit your views in that public participation. Even if they don't take consideration of your views, we shall meet them because we know the time is coming. And lastly, on the issue of Limuru 3, it's a good start. Okay. We want to see many Limuru 3s in Luonyanza, in Makweni, in Mombasa, because the principle of one man, one vote, one shilling is a principle that promotes democracy and political equality. Right. The political equality in this country is more important than any other. That what determines the people in Homa Bay, Kasipul, where I come from, what they get okay. in terms of allocation. No, it me. determines what put foods on the table. We ask you, the public, as we go into the next week, so much is going to happen, but be wary about Kenya Kwanza regime that is trying to promote a finance bill that is punitive and reckless. When is Kano leaving? Uh, uh, come on. We shall, we, we shall <laughs> communicate. I see that. what you're doing. He's been talking about anyway, it. Anyway, <laughs> that's how we wrap up today's edition of Inside Politics. Gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your input. Maliba Arnold, who is not an apologist, he is the strategic course. yes and the strategic communication advisor at uda <laughs> asante sana equally joined by fanya mambo kinudia a lawyer we appreciate your input frederick okango secretary of political affairs as Emil, asante sana for your input that's how we wrap up today's edition of inside politics hope you're adequately informed have yourself a fantastic week thank you for watching i'm jesse rogers thank you.